Hey everybody, welcome to the Coding Zoo. If this is your first time joining, my name is Shane, and this is the Coding Zoo Java Building Blocks series. I'm a software engineer for about 20 years. A lot of that time has been spent in Java. This video is just going to give you quick notes on what Java is, uh, what was unique about it when it first came out, and also, is it still prevalent today? Is it still something worth learning? So, if you're interested in that, stick around. We're going to jump right in. Alright, so a little bit about Java. Uh, Java uh, is an object-oriented programming language developed by James Goslin uh, at Sun Microsystems in the early 90s. I personally started developing with it in 1999 or around 2000. So I've got several years of experience in Java and I love it. Java is an awesome language. There's so much of an ecosystem built around Java. And when I say ecosystem, I'm talking about there's so much open source projects out there supported by hundreds of people uh, that are very mature and very usable. So that's one of the key benefits of Java. It's just a huge ecosystem. It's used everywhere, everywhere from games to uh, websites to embedded software to phones. It is used pretty much everywhere. So Java is only distantly related to JavaScript. They both have similar C-like syntax. One of the reasons one of the reasons that Java was unique when it first came out was it was one of the few languages that was right once run anywhere. That was one of the main reasons that uh, James Goslin and his team at Sun uh, built the first version of Java. So what do they mean by write once and run anywhere? Uh, I, I would probably say it's more accurate to say compile once and run anywhere, but I think write once is kind of true too, and I'll explain that in a minute. But look at this diagram I have here. So picture each of these devices. There's a, de there's a Windows desktop, there's a Unix server, and there's an embedded device. An embedded device is something like, hey, your refrigerator or your car, you know, some computer chip in your car, stuff like that, right? When you wanted to program for each of those type of devices, each of those devices had different uh, operating systems you know you've heard of windows and you've heard of the you know max os um, you've heard probably heard of linux right so each of these different systems or devices had different operating systems which means they had different instruction sets so instruction sets are basically what tells the computer what to do and how to do to do certain things so before when you had to write a program that would run on multiple different devices and multiple OS's, well, you had to change the code a little bit in some cases, uh, not all the time, but in some cases you had to change the little code a little bit to work with that specific OS. But even worse is you actually had to take that code over to that OS and use a specific compiler made for that OS. So you had to have different compilations, one for each OS you wanted to run that program on. And you can imagine having to write different code in some cases, having to compile for different OSs that can be tedious and somewhat hard to manage. So that was the beauty of Java. Java made it to where you did not have to do that anymore. And after that, C Sharp, uh, Microsoft followed along and brought out C Sharp. And C Sharp is also another language. You don't have to do that anymore. So how is Java different in that way? So Java is basically a language where you can write on write in any OS, all right? Um, you can write the code, and that code is compiled into bytecode, Java bytecode. So Java bytecode is code that's made to run on a Java virtual machine. So you'll hear the word JVM. So the JVM stands for Java Virtual Machine. So basically, instead of taking code and having to compile it for all the different OSs, Sun and the rest of the industry created JVMs for each OS. So a Unix server has its own version of the JVM that is made for that OS. Windows has its own version of the JVM that's made for Windows and so forth. So instead of having to recompile and recode different programs, 
each OS just has a different virtual machine. And that Java virtual machine, virtual machine, is a machine that can run Java bytecode. So you could take the same Java bytecode and run it on multiple OSs without having to change the code or, re or recompile the code, all that good stuff. So that's kind of the beauty of Java when it first came out. And again, Microsoft followed its lead and came out with C Sharp, and C Sharp has its own runtime just like that also. There are a lot of great languages coming out today or are coming up today. Some have been around for a while and are, are finally getting steam and, uh, and really just taking off. One example is Python. Python has been around for quite a while, but man, it is just growing and growing and growing. And part of that's because of machine learning, machine uh, AI type uh, programming. Python has been, Python, Python's an awesome language to learn. And we may actually get into some lessons covering Python in the near future. Java is not a new language. Um, there are definitely newer languages out there that are up and coming and they're growing very fast. But what does that mean they're growing fast? Does that mean they're like overtaking Java and C and C++? Well, no, no, it doesn't mean that. So Java may not be growing as fast um, and it may even be declining some years, but there are so many jobs. There are so many uh, companies out there that run Java, that still run C, that run Python, and, and they're going to be there for years to come. A lot of new projects are created daily in Java, right? It's not like they're all legacy systems. There's a lot of new work in Java. It's huge. Why it is good to learn new languages, it's good to have multiple tools in your toolbox. Java is one of those, one of them. The other languages can be another. Um, Java is still very, very prevalent. So if you look at this uh, page here, you're going to see uh, various years where the programming languages were ranked. So they were ranked by the, the TIOB, or I'm not sure I can say that correctly, TIOBE.com index. And they are uh, very reputable. They uh, go over how they gather this information um, and they rate the languages each month, uh, each year. So this is a, a average of those months across each of the year. You can see that Java since 2004 has been number one or number two. So 2004 has been the number one language or number two language uh, as far as in use, being used, jobs, uh, etc. So, and of course, followed by that is C, Python, C++, C Sharp's in the top six. Uh, you'll see JavaScript there. I think they got it wrong on this. If anybody at that website hears me, I'd love to hear where you got that number. I actually believe JavaScript is right up there with Java, if not beating Java. Uh, JavaScript has really taken off. I wonder if uh, the, the, the algorithm they use to search uh, languages isn't given JavaScript justice. Perhaps there's a lot of uh, jobs out there that just say React.js or AngularJS. They don't say the word JavaScript. Maybe that's throwing it off a little bit. I'm not sure. Maybe they have a smarter algorithm than that, and this is the correct numbers. Uh, I, I, my impression is JavaScript's a little off. This is this year. This is the uh, index from uh, August. So in August, you can see Java is still number one. It's got 16% of the market. It did decrease by 0.85%. 0.85. Uh, C sharp. Uh, C, C is next. Uh, it has 15% of the market. Um, you can actually see an increase. Uh, and then we have Python, C++, and C Sharp. Now each month you can see the increase or decrease for that given language. You can see how much they're growing in the market or, or not. So pretty neat index. You can actually compare it to others. Be careful. There are some that are uh, might be a little bit off depending upon how they gather the data. For example, GitHub. GitHub is a great resource for seeing what kind of projects are being made out there. Um, but, what, but would GitHub be a good avenue for measuring uh, the amount of C-sharp projects out of there? Well, C-sharp is a Microsoft product, and Microsoft has its own source system for saving code. So GitHub as a source system, uh, as a system, probably wouldn't be a good way to measure where C-sharp fits in that list. So there are, there are a lot of lists out there. This is the one I find to be pretty accurate, or to make more sense. Next, we're going to jump into how to uh, structure your code, how to create your code, how to create classes, and all that good stuff. 
I hope you look forward to that. Uh, we're going to cover that next. If you have any questions, definitely leave a message below. I'll get back to you. If this is your first time watching this, hey, click that subscribe button below, that subscribe button and the alert bell, and you'll be able to tell when our next videos come out. We are doing videos on Java, uh, JavaScript, HTML, CSS. Eventually, we may even get into Python. Right now, we're going to cover a little bit of Java. We may jump back to JavaScript some, and then maybe into Python. Thanks for joining today. I hope you have a great week. And if you're learning how to program, keep it up. Keep keep striving. Keep learning. It's a great field to be in. I hope you have a great week, and I'll see you next time. Bye.